I'd like to know um, what can I do to help my neighbour who's 90 um, and is extremely lonely? Hi Sharon, that's such a lovely question and I imagine there's a lot of people out there who have elderly neighbours and perhaps we don't always know what's best to do for them um, to help them because so many people nowadays are feeling so isolated and lonely. I think a key point is if you could visit regularly, it doesn't have to be for long, just visit regularly to show that you care and that you're there, you're about um, to be on hand should they need anything. That goes such a long way in helping elderly people um, not feel as isolated and lonely. Something I like to do also is offer to run errands. Perhaps you could offer to nip them into town or pick something up from the shops. Again, even if they don't actually take you up on that offer, just knowing that you're there to be able to potentially do things like that would go such a long way, I'm sure, and make them feel um, you know, less, less lonely. Um, something I also like to do that I find a lot of elderly people don't always have the motivation to do is cook a meal for themselves, and especially if they're on their own. So what I do sometimes for my clients is if I've cooked something nice that I think they'd enjoy, I offer to plate up an extra meal or do so and just pop it round to them. And then that way I know that they've got a proper meal, they've seen somebody um, and they feel, they feel worthy, they feel appreciated. So perhaps you might consider doing that. There's lots of things we can do and often it's the little things that go such a long way in helping the elderly community. What a lovely question. Thank you for getting in touch. How would you choose the perfect care for my loved Hi, one? Hi Kyle, thanks for getting in touch. It's a really, really good question. And many of us in our lives are gonna um, have a situation where we're gonna experience adult social care of some kind, whether that's for ourselves or looking after an elderly relative or friend. So yeah, it's very important to choose a carer that fits with the individual's values. So we can do that by many different ways. Obviously it's a very personal choice, but I think there's several things that we can consider from the off. Um, and so we need to consider what specific skills that a carer needs to look after an individual. So is the individual gonna need personal care or are they just gonna need home help, for example? So somebody who would be needing personal care might need a carer with a certain set of qualifications if they're gonna need moving and handling or special medical requirements that an, an individual might need. Um, I think it's also really important to consider the long-term implications of what sort of care an individual might need. Is their condition going to get worse or might they need personal care in the future, whereas now they don't need that. So it's important to set something up that can be adaptable, but also it's important that the individual is somebody that is well liked, somebody that they can get along with, perhaps they have special interests or they share the same hobby that a person might um, you know, go to their hobby or do something with them that is of a similar interest. There's also other things to consider. Would you want to use an agency and have different carers attending? Some people like that. Some people like seeing different people. Or would it be better for the person to have a private individual so that they can really bond a strong relationship with them um, and they can really get to know them on an individual basis? So there's really lots of things to consider when choosing a carer. But there are some you know, key factors that you can think about from the off, about what the actual requirements are, how many hours, days or times that a person might need. Can the carer you've chosen fulfil that? Can they increase or decrease if situation changes? And obviously it's very important to make sure you interview that person, get to know them, what their personal attributes are. Um, get references, ensure they're DBS checked, that they've, um, you know, their criminal record is clear. Um, and then also generally, the bottom line is I tend to go on my gut instinct. Do I think that person is caring at heart? Because you can have all the qualifications in the world, but if you don't care within yourself, then um, that's perhaps not the best setup. So really um, get to know that person and see how you feel they get along with the person that they're going to care for because that's that's ultimately what you want a good relationship so that the care can be delivered in the most caring way i hope that helps i have a question um what is the power of attorney and what are the benefits or the risks involved in having one in place thank you 
Hello Shirley, yes, thank you for getting in touch. That's a really important question as well because so many people don't wanna talk about things like this, but actually it's really, really important to do so. So a lasting power of attorney might also be referred to as an LPA. And there are two types of power of attorney. One covers for financial matters and estate matters, and one is for healthcare matters. So you actually have both. Now they are, uh, well you can have both, sorry. They are a legal document which um, gives you grants authority and it allows somebody to act on your behalf in financial, legal or healthcare matters. So there's huge benefits to that because that means that somebody can act on your behalf so that all your affairs are arranged if you or the person you care for um, becomes unable to do so. So that can help in matters such as if somebody was diagnosed with dementia and sadly they would no longer have capacity down the line to deal with such matters. There is somebody trustworthy that can act on these matters on their behalf legally and responsibly. Obviously there are risks involved if such powers were misused or there was an abuse of power um, they were misused. So it's really important that a power of attorney is somebody that you can trust. It's often a family member or a close friend. Um, and it means that your wishes are clearly defined um, as long as you make sure that the there's clear definitions or limitations on what you want somebody to do with that with that document. But it can be hugely beneficial if somebody goes into hospital and suddenly doesn't have the capacity um, to be able to deal with such matters. A power of attorney means it can be dealt with much more easily by somebody um, on somebody else's behalf. If an LPA is not set up, it can lead to all sorts of complicated matters. And it can also mean that other people, such as healthcare professionals, can act what, in what they think is your best interest, but that might necessarily not be in your wishes. So it's really important that you get an LPA set up as soon as possible, if that is the right thing for you. I hope that helps.